In today's video, we're going to be looking at the returns by month for April and how that kind of fits into the overall picture, the holistic view right now of this market as what's most likely to come in April. And other than that, I'm going to welcome you back to the Air Crown Crypto channel. We can just jump right in this one, starting off with the chart view and the April returns. So in this case, we do see, let me actually just uh, make that a little bit better. There we go. As this is a live stream right now, we do say that all, the, all of these green vertical bars do represent past Aprils in Bitcoin's history. Now, I do want to say that in general, you can see kind of just by, you know, by visual view that April is generally an upside month, especially in bulls in bull markets, even in the sort of uh, year, I would say before the really big bull explosion, like you do see right in over here. Um, in 20, uh, 2017, this would be a really good example of what you typically do see in April as this one was consolidating around the prior all-time high. And then April was the month where it actually did close on new all-time highs and continued upwards and onwards for uh, basically the next year and a half to – or. Yeah, the next, or sorry, the next half year to the all-time highs. Um, same thing over here in 2020, and actually did kind of hit the all-time high in March of 2021 more recently. And of course, as we do get into, I would say, consolidations around current all-time highs, well, we can go ahead and reference these statistics for April specifically, as I've measured out all the past 13 Aprils in Bitcoin's history and found that of 13 Aprils, nine, nine of those, nine out of 13, did close positively and actually did have pretty significant returns, I'd say, as well. Um, the average return for April in Bitcoin's history for the positive months only, not not including the negative months, but just the positive months, was 58, almost 59%. So 58 spot 70. Um, now, to be fair, the first April that Bitcoin did see was a tremendously positive return at 300, uh, oops, <laughs> 350% almost. So if we do omit that one, that is going to bring the average down significantly to 22.5%. So almost nukes it by more than, or do, does nuke it by more than 50%. But still, you can see that on average, average April um, on the positive months was printing, you know, really into like the deep 20%. So I would say that again, April in general is, you know, rather high return month for Bitcoin. On top of that, whoops, let me center that a little bit better. This again being the positive, po positive returns right here. So I'll just type that in positive, <laughs> maybe I actually spell it properly, positive uh, av returns. Okay. Jesus Christ. There we go. <clears throat> By percent. Um, in the next column right here, this would be the negative returns, which it did lose on average um, 13, almost 14%, basically. Uh, so in the in the event that we did see negative um, Aprils, that was the average loss. And we do have a standard deviation measurement on that as well. For the positive months, it was 17%. For the negative months, it was about 14.5%. So on the positive side, you can see you know a high probability zone between about 5% on the downside versus about 39% on the upside or 30 or almost 40% on the upside. So, um, you know, pretty wide right there, obviously. But in the event of bull markets, we typically do see that April is actually on the higher side. Again, as we went over here in 2020, 2021, again in 2017, um, we have another big one in 2013, and we have another humongous one in 2011 right here. So, you know, in general, when Bitcoin is bullish in a basically a weekly and monthly uptrend, April has been the month where, you know, you've seen some pretty, uh, some pretty amazing returns. Even when Bitcoin is, you know, kind of coming off of the lows, those average returns were a little bit, you know, more in the single digits for the positive months. And of course, when Bitcoin's been in a bear trend, in an overall downtrend, uh, April has been, you know, actually a pretty, pretty nasty month as well, to be fair. But in this case, seeing as Bitcoin is in the monthly uptrend and is in the weekly uptrend, we would say that generally speaking, long-term extrapolating from that, April is more likely to be a positive month. And if we are to take that average at about 22%, and also understanding that recently, um, in basically the last year, Bitcoin has played in, in the within the averages of these returns almost every time, uh, except for except for February. That was a big month, um, which was not really expected, uh, at least by by monthly average returns. You know, twenty two percent from the current, uh, you know, from current price, which we would be kind of assuming that Bitcoin closes somewhere around here in the next six days, as we're on the twenty fifth day of March right now. You know, twenty percent to the upside puts Bitcoin at about eighty thousand bucks. I do think that's a, that that is a rather interesting number because if you do recall back to last week's setup, we do have a statistical setup over here, which does imply that Bitcoin is at a greater risk of an upside continuation move. Whoops, this is not the right one. Uh, where did that chart go? Hey, 
what the fuck? Oh, did I select the wrong one? I think I did select the wrong one. My apologies there. Uh, just <laughs> ton goofing all across the lands right now. Let me see if I can pull it up really quickly here. I, th I believe it's on this chart. And we'll get rid of that past one. And we can see that if we put on this setup, yes, the daily <clears throat> did have about a 39% probability. No, this is not the setup right here. All right, perhaps I'll just have to come back to that later because I don't have it readily available for myself. But if we go over here to the daily time frame for the HPDR bounce, we can see that Bitcoin is getting that bounce that we spoke about over the weekend. And because Bitcoin did trade and close above Friday's high, it very likely does move at least towards the median here and probably even closer towards 69,000 bucks. This is essentially a volatility mean reversion play. We do see that volatility is continuing to contract. And as Bitcoin is living below the median, well, the median is kind of like a magnet for that, as especially HP Duro starts to turn up here as well. So not only is it very likely to test at least a median, it's probably likely to at least try a little bit of a move, um, you know, more than that, uh, potentially as much as a 38.2 level, but I'd say very, very likely somewhere around 69 thousand bucks so in the short term bitcoin you know probably has a little bit of short term upside uh here not necessarily saying that this one's going to break out to new optimize from this current posturing i do still think that it's overall range bound between here and essentially seventy two thousand bucks but here's the thing bitcoin seemingly does have a nice higher low on the daily in place as of right now so you know this this consolidation is shaping up to be more and more a bullish consolidation as we've been saying over the past week or two now that bitcoin as long as it's going sideways here is going to favor the blue laws as far as the overall consolidation goes it's just timing of this for a resolution probably not going to be in march we're probably looking at april and maybe a little bit further down the line in april as well in this case as uh, based off of yesterday's video i do want to reiterate that i do believe that the worst case scenario for the bitcoin blue laws here is still if this if this consolidation were to resolve to the downside you're probably looking at somewhere in low $50,000. But as long as Bitcoin trades sideways here, especially with this higher low in at 63,000 bucks, it's looking more and more like the Bitcoin is going to put in a low here above $60,000, which does play hand in hand with the long-term view of the Bitcoin production cost, cost fundamentals over here, that 60,000 bucks is going to be a long-term area of you know, a value, if you will, as we are going to see the production cost for bit per Bitcoin rise and double here as the halving happens in again, April from 30,000 to 60,000 bucks. And that has essentially been a basement price for Bitcoin on even the most egregious of nasty dump olas, like, uh, like we saw in March of 2020 and on all macro cycle lows, it has hit the lower side of that, but hasn't really, you know, closed and trended below the low side of that. So again, in in April, we're going to see the, ha or no, it's not April, it's May, or it's April or May, whatever the fuck, it's somewhere around there, it doesn't matter, um, but, uh, <laughs> but, but in this case, the last having, for example, we did see in May of 2020, and you can see that the basement cost did double from about, or more than doubled from 4,100 all the way up to uh, almost 9,000, so a little bit more than doubled right there, and again, that did become a a bargain price or, you know, a, a very good value price for Bitcoin and then upwards and onwards from there. And then same thing, you know, of course, in cycles past, as we did see the halving happen again over here in July of 2016, you see it double overnight and that becomes a good base for Bitcoin. So I do suspect that that is going to start to really play hand in hand with what we're seeing over here. And 60,000 is going to be very likely um, a base for the first consolidation. Again, I'm not saying that Bitcoin continues up under the right from this exact moment. I'm saying that Bitcoin trading sideways within this within this region is probably going to be a value area maybe it even tests somewhere down around sixty thousand bucks a few more times but ultimately this is shaping up to be you know the next sort of low i do suspect just going to take its time and time is going to favor the boo laws here essentially anyways moving on from there i do want to get into stochastic momentum we do see that the weekly stochastic loss order has officially crossed the downside so again that is playing into the more long term or medium term view i should say that we're unlikely to see continuation in the more near term the current pivot for the weekly stochastic loss order is 71,600. So technically speaking, if Bitcoin were to close above there at the end of this next coming week, it would flip it back up. I, I would say that's probably less likely, even though you might see a test around there as possible. It probably doesn't close above there probably remains range bound. The daily time frame, however, is going to have a chance to, cl to cross the upside today on today's closure with any sort of a cross or sorry, with any sort of a closure above 65,650. 65, so again, playing into the former analysis of the HPDR bands, we're very likely to see another try to the upside in the short term. It's just I want to differentiate now between the short term and sort of the medium term in the sense that Bitcoin likely to try some upside here. Is it likely to continue? 
I'd say that's less likely until at least we're into April and probably into the deeper portion of April. I'd suspect that th that real con uh, continuation doesn't happen until after the halving. At that point, you know, I do think that we could see a move to new all-time highs, probably into the $80,000 territory, um, and maybe even more than that over time. But take it one step at a time, of course. I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off on this particular video. Do I want to bring up any of the other setups that we do have? Um, you know, we could potentially bring up this setup over here. I forget exactly where I put it, though. That's the problem with this. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's maybe it's a daily YouTube setup, as I have uh, outlined right here on the actual name. Yeah, indeed it is. So remember, we do still have this statistical setup based off of the daily time frame with the Crown VMP indicators, a very simple setup, basically low volatility coupled with a daily uptrend and a three-day uptrend. So when all of those conditions are met, it has typically fired off a nice, a nice, a nice probabilistic setup, just over 51% over the full course of history. But what's more important than that is that is not just that, you know, it's a little bit better than a coin toss. It gives us probabilities as to how big of a move to expect from that particular pivot, which did fire off on Tuesday of last week at about 61, 62,000 bucks, um, which is basically the closing low of this uh, consolidation thus far. And it would suggest that the average winning trade from that is 20, uh, let me just blow it up right here. It's about 22.5%, which is actually very much in alignment with the statistics that we um, uh, viewed over here for the average returns by month um, at 20. Actually, holy shit, it's almost literally the exact same. 22 spot 45. And what do we have over here? 22 spot 65. Wow. Um, so fair enough. You know, that's actually very interesting now that we look at it. Um, of course, this setup will be essentially negated. It will be invalidated if we do see a 5% or sorry, an 8% move to the downside from that entry. And that would be if Bitcoin essentially trades below $57,000 until that happens more than likely that or a little bit more likely that we do see that move about 22% from about 62,000 bucks which would take us into uh, into April. And of course, this is being built off of the Crown Quant Automation script over here, which you can find a link to in the description below. I should let you know the good old shill link as we do have a nice sale going on until the end of this month, which we do have another another actually week, one week from today, and then it's over. It ends for forever. No more sales ever again, as it's going to be the lowest price ever with the code HAPPY6 here in all capitals. Uh, should let you know. You can make setups like this. You can basically make edit any setup that you want at, from whatever tools that you have on trading view. I mean, it's just a base. It's just kind of like a, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a cookie cutter setup over here. Like basically you get to put input any sort of indicators, any sort of things, any sort of strategies that you might be mulling over into this skeleton key called the crown quant automation. And that will allow you to then back test it um, and see the results over here, get more gran granular data over here. And then you can even automate that as well, but it will require some input from your own self. Of course, I give out some strategy sort of uh, uh, what's it called like blueprints, if you will. Um, but you're really expected to kind of iterate on top of that. Although, you know, those will kind of work in their base format. So there you go. All right. That's enough shilling for one day. Thank you. And as always, fuck you and see you tomorrow.